Hello, Ace Nation. I am longtime independent wrestling fan Robert. Lethal Injection it was a very good show from the Knights of Columbus in Teaneck, New Jersey. And uh, quite a crowd turned out for this event. I'll definitely discuss that later. Well, the uh, show begins. We were scheduled to see. Now, it wound up being uh, Black Zemus taking on the creature double feature, Mouse. Mouse was initially uh, going to face the Zombie King, Junior Flo, but I guess Junior Flo was unable to make the event. Uh, good match these guys had, which saw Mouse defeat Black Zemus. Next up, in his, another singles match, we saw the lit superstar Sebastian Cage go one-on-one -on -one with nobody's better Michael Mastretta. Uh, good match these guys had, and I forgot how it ended, but Michael Mastretta picked up the win, and after the match, he threw his wrist tape at me. I don't know if that was his wrist tape or whatever that was he threw right at me. Well, in my direction, but it didn't didn't catch me. Next up, in, a, in a, a triple threat match, we saw the comic book warrior Gabriel Baez versus Prince Akhenaten versus Love Jones for the Fight for Flight Championship. Uh, Akhenaten, I'm still waiting for you to come out to the Bangles song, Walk Like an Egyptian, because I don't even recognize what you currently come out to. Uh, Fight for Flight champion Love Jones defeated Prince Akhenaten and comic book warrior Gabriel Baez to retain the Fight for Flight championship. Next up, in singles competition, we see the debut, unless I'm mistaken, it's the, de the ace debut of the Big Poppy, Big Cuzzo, as he did battle with... Absolute Alvin Alvarez. Uh, glad to see Big Cuzzo got an opportunity to showcase what he could do. And eventually Alvin Alvarez picked up the win over the Big Poppy Big Cuzzo. Next up, a return bout from Collision Course back in September as Monkey King Dio and Caveman, the kings of the Stone Age, challenged Kenny All Day, Kenny Bengal, and... Bulldog Pittman, the Silk City Kings for the uh, Ace Tag Team Pro Wrestling Tag Team Championship. Uh, definitely look like Kings of the Stone Age really thought they had had uh, Silk City Kings' number, but the Silk City Kings prevailed, defeating the Kings of the Stone Age to retain the Ace Pro Wrestling Tag Team Championship. At that point, the show had gone to intermission. Uh, the show resumed with... Uh, Fighting Jack Morris, he's taking on the infamous Adam Kane. Adam Kane was initially going to wrestle Alvin Alvarez on this event. Um, the infamous Adam Kane picked up the win over Fighting Jack Morrissey to um, to uh, get the win, and I believe this was Adam Kane's debut. Next up in another title matchup, we saw. Bad Brad Benson challenged Cade Lothbrock, accompanied a ring by, ring by Foxy Foxy for the Diamond Division Championship. And, ah, oh, good match up here. Uh, Cade Lothbrock eventually puts Bad Brad Benson away with a lariato and pinned him to retain the Diamond Division Championship. But after the match, Cade offers a handshake to Bad Brad. He says, I trained you. Trained you. But Bad Brad slaps Cade in the face and then leaves the ring. And Bad Brad says this isn't over. But, you know, what about Dominic De Niro, who attacked Cade after his match at Friday Night Massacre last month? Up next was a great battle of big men as we saw the Miasma. Not the Miasma, Ryan Peterson. The Miasma. Zach Ramsey's as he challenged the Jurassic Juggernaut, Vince Steele, for the Ace Pro Wrestling Heavyweight Championship. You know, I don't know if these two face each other for the first time on this on this event, but you know, hopefully the Miasma Zach Ramsey will get more up, get another chance to appear in Ace in the future. Uh, Vince Steele has never really disappointed me in terms of in terms of his uh, his ability in that ring. Uh, Vince Steele retained the title, defeating Zach Ramsey's, and then I guess since it went on last, this was the main event as. For the first time in years, Jay Lethal made his return to Ace Pro Wrestling, taking on Rob Vegas. 
Um, I noticed Lethal's parents were in the crowd. Uh, his dad seemed to have lost weight and seemed to be walking very slowly. Don't know if one of his, one or both of his sisters were there too. Uh, Vegas' uh, sons were in the crowd as well. Definitely a good match by these two guys and uh, a lot of close moments. Lethal kept teasing the figure four leg lock. Uh, I was glad that Lethal came out to push it by Static X. Gave me flashbacks of his days in Jersey All Pro Wrestling long ago. And um, eventually Vegas had put uh, Jay Lethal in the uh, Texas Cloverleaf. I think Lethal tried to get to the ropes. Then Vegas pulled him away and put the move on him again. And much like the first ever hero celebration back in 2015, Rob Vegas defeated Jay Lethal by submission with the uh, Texas Cloverleaf. And that's how this very show had ended. Personal notes time. It was uh, good seeing Mike Morgan, Denise, Ryan Peterson, Sh Sharon, uh, Carl Roberts, Bob... Uh Hmm. Hmm. I wonder where Shady Torres was. He didn't referee on this show. Uh. By the way, the show was now scheduled to start at 5 p.m., but it didn't start till 5:35 p.m. Um, as, as after getting after being let in, the crowd was let in at some point. Uh, you hear Cheyenne asking the crowd that some wrestlers were stuck and had a uh, had traffic to preventing them from getting getting to the to the show. Uh, hmm. Well, one, we got one memorable quote here. Hmm. Get a new suit, Ryan. Bob, when he when Ryan came out to start the show. Uh, also in attendance, Russell Pro's Kevin Matthews noticed me and <laughs> Kevin. I'm no legend. I don't know why I'm being called a legend for some reason. All right. I mean, one if you want to talk about a wrestling fan, that's a legend. That's that was the late Paul Paul Rose. For those who don't know, that was the man gentleman in the crowd who for so many years was known for yelling, give it to him or give it to her. You know, that man was a legend. You know, it's been 10 years, a decade away since he passed away. I wish he was still with us. That that gentleman was a fan. More of a fan than I was. I mean, he was I mean, heck, he was, he was older than my he was older than my late father. I mean, he could have he was old enough to have Fathered, possibly grandfathered a lot of the young men and women wrestling on the independents in the past 20 years. Since the early 2000s. Another thing that gets me is, uh, why is it, how come it was announced the morning of the show uh, that there would be a Survivor Series, a viewing of Survivor Series after the, after Lethal Injection was over? Why did they wait till the morning of Lethal Injection? I mean, if you had done that, announced that from the beginning when the show Lethal Injection was first announced or maybe a week or so before this show happened, maybe more people would have come. I really think so. By the way, uh, those had a, had a three, three pizza empanadas and mm, just so good. <laughs> but didn't, I knew that was going to hold me because when the show ended, I didn't stick around to watch Survivor Series. After all... If I wouldn't stick around to watch WrestleMania after both Ace Indie Mania shows, you know, this wasn't going to be an exception. But after um, Lethal Injection was over, I left and I walked over to uh, Roberto's Pizzeria on uh, Cedar Lane, walking distance from T-Next Knights of Columbus. And I think I had something to eat before I uh, got took a bus back to New York City. Uh, oh, how can I, I, can't, I forgot to mention, great seeing Ace Pro Wrestling historian Adolfo, who I hadn't seen, I think, since since like Hero Celebration earlier this year. And it was great seeing his son Noah for the first time since Crossroads 14 back in 2018. And I think it's safe to say, since no return date was announced, 
that there'll be no crossroads this year. Um, um, I guess, you know, the next show will be in January, and that's usually Redemption, and followed by Hero Celebration in February, which, for those who don't know, is the tribute show to the departed Mike Morgan Jr. Uh, it'd be a miracle if we had crossroads in December, but... I guess with Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve being Saturdays this year, I don't think it's going to happen. It wouldn't surprise me. It would, I'd be shocked if it had, if we had Crossroads before this year was out. But man, oh man, oh man. Uh, hmm. Oh, and also Mike Morgan, uh, I guess with WrestleMania being a two-night event now, I don't know if you'd ever consider bringing back Indie Mania as a one or two day event. I mean, you know, I don't know which promotions you would, uh, would, would, would you, would be taking part of it aside from Ace Pro Wrestling. Uh, just hope, uh, you know, it'd be great if that did happen. It was just, just a, a one day event. Indie Mania 3, that is. All right. Uh, Although, again, no, no return date was announced for the next show, but I would like to see at the next show maybe uh, Kate Lothbrock one-on-one -on -one with uh, with Bad Brad Benson. Not yet, three, a triple threat match. Either a triple threat with Bad Brad, Bad Brad Benson and Dominic De Niro, or maybe Kate Lothbrock one-on-one -on -one with Dominic De Niro. Uh, don't know what other one of the tag teams we could have against the Silk City Kings for the tag belts. Um, but I'm sure the usual cast of characters will be there. But also another factor that uh, Pro Wrestling Magic did a show in Ridgefield Park while Lethal Injection was going on. That could have been a factor to the crowd to why there were more people at TNEC. But this may have been one of the biggest crowds for, except for since like Hero Celebration earlier this year because Friday Night Massacre last month didn't wasn't too big of a crowd. Only maybe, well, uh, you know, not, not, it was more more here at Lethal Injection compared to Friday Night Massacre last month. But again, Ace, you know, another great show, another great night of wrestling. Uh, Ryan Peterson. Next time I catch you at a show somewhere, I think you and I need to have a photo together. I don't think there's any photos of us together anywhere. Uh, okay, so, again, hats off, Ace Pro Wrestling. If this is the final show of 2022, if it, like I said, I'd be shocked if, we, if Crossroads happens in December. But, um, mm, I, you know, it'd be something if it did. If not, I guess we will, we'll we'll see Ace and I'll see Ace in twenty twenty three at some point. But all together now, Ace, 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 Ace. Oh, I forgot before I go. I forgot to mention. Uh, couldn't believe the the bell was not even on on the commentators table at the time the first match began, and Cheyenne just like knocked on the like knocked on the table to try to ring the bell to start the opening match up. Couldn't believe that wasn't even in place yet. Ooh. All right. So, again, can't wait for for the next ace show whenever it will be.